Thank you for worshiping with us. My name is Pastor Brandon Melendez. This is my wife, Natalie. We pray that this week's message was life-giving and an encouraged relationship with the Lord. There are always opportunities to get connected and partner with what God is doing at Capital City Church. To see all the ways to give and events happening, click the link in the description. We love you. We can't wait to see the many ways that God moves in and through you. Thanks again for watching. God bless you. You guys have your Bibles. Let's turn to Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, worship team, for, for leading us in worship. Daniel and Ekom and Gabe, thank you guys so much. We're so thankful for you guys' yes. Galatians 5. I'm not going to read that verse right away, but I do want to say... Kicking off this series of the fruit of the Spirit, why is love mentioned first? I was, like, I was really thinking about this today. Like, why wasn't love mentioned second or third? Love is the goat, greatest of all time. Have you heard that term? The goat? Love really is the goat. Not any sports team, not any basketball or baseball team. Love is the absolute goat because it's the love of Christ that he shed his blood for us to be here right now. So love is the absolute greatest. And 1 Corinthians 13, 13 says, you don't have to turn there, but it says three things will last forever. Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. When we love from our hearts, I believe that the rest of the fruits become tangible to us, as we're going to read about tonight. But love goes first. And I believe that when the love of God changes the inside of us, and when we love others with the same love that Christ has given us, all the rest of the fruits of the Spirit actually become tangible in our lives. When you love, everything else will flow. It's like it's like a river. It's like you, you step into a river and you're like, okay, I, I know I'm called to love. And now once I get in the river and all I have is love, everything else is going to flow in perfect harmony with each other. So it's Galatians chapter 5, verse 19. It says, when you follow the desires of your sinful nature, here's the bad stuff. The results are very clear. Sexual immorality, impurity lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, and quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. Let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. Anyone living this life right here will not inherit the kingdom of God. I don't want my name anywhere in that top part of that passage. Will not inherit the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit, as Romans 14, 17 tells us. Continuing in verse 22, but the Holy Spirit, here's the good stuff, produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, Patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature to the cross and crucified them there. Since we are living by the Spirit, here we go, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. Say every part. Let us not become conceited or provoke one another or be jealous of one another. I saw a word as I was reading this over and over and over this week. I saw a word that was actually mentioned twice in this, few, in this passage of a few verses. Do you know what word is mentioned twice? Jealousy. Jealousy. I laugh at this one. <laughs> I laugh because I'm like, why and how can we as, as Bible-believing Christians be jealous for people that God places in our lives? Because 
when I see the church, when I see Jesus, when I see the gospel, I think of a movement that is being pioneered by his spirit for us to say, I can't be in the way of championing people that God places in our lives. Because when we, when we have our champion and our father in heaven championing us and living in us, I can't help but to love and champion others. That's what we're called to do. Jealousy will not inherit the kingdom of God. Not only do you create a problem for yourself, you start to resent others. You start to put walls up and you start to put a divide between the cross and the world and you start to make you start to wedge in between what God wants to do in our lives and 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 I think that that so many times it, and I'm saying the church, we can get ourselves in a funk because we think that maybe we have it all together, but we actually don't. And so when we when we think that we, we begin to build walls and and say, no, actually, I can't be around this person because X, Y and Z. And we start to build up a, a case for for somebody or something. And and it begins to take root in our heart. And honestly, I can't even function when that happens. As a Christian, I can't function when when I see my my mind or my heart even begin to go down the road of of jealousy or resentment to somebody or or even start to not love somebody the same way that I had loved them before. I I begin to put up walls and not only does it hurt you, but it it hurts others. And it really what it comes down to is there there's no exceptions between family or friends or anything. I mean, it's not categorized saying it, it, we just have, you know, jealousy towards family or just towards friends or even think about those in in our workplace of people getting job promotions. I mean, it, it all, it all is across the table. It's all even playing field. And, 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 and as, as Christians, I, I, I really hold this dear to my heart because we we sometimes have to say, Jesus, take all that junk out of my heart. And I, I said it here before, but the tallest place that we stand is actually on our knees. And so jealousy could very much easily be traded tonight for Jesus. We trade jealousy for Jesus. And he'll say, I'll come in and I'll make things right and I'll clean you up and you'll be on your way and I'll make you a whole new person. Be so full of love that people literally think you're crazy. (laughs) So crazy. Love the unlovable, right? Like when we go and, and, and see people and we're like in their face. You ever have those people that just get in your face and they're like, hey, what's up? Good to see you. And they're like in your face and they're like, Man, you're just loving me like crazy. Take a couple steps back. But literally let your love be so wild for people that they cannot, they cannot not see Jesus in you. Let it be so wild and so crazy. I love what 1 Corinthians 13, 4 says, love is patient. We know this. Love is kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. Love also humbles itself for something it trusts and sees value in. It is not irritable and it keeps no record of being wronged. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up. Love never loses faith. It always is hopeful and endures through every circumstance. I'm thankful that the love of Christ did not hesitate to love me in my darkest hour. God didn't hesitate to love us. Think about that. He did not hesitate to love us. 
His love is continuously going after us. And we are continuously being loved by God. Like even in this moment, no matter what we've come in here with tonight, we're continuously being loved by God. Nothing could ever separate us from that love tonight. And I'm so thankful for it. Because there's so many times where we want to run and hide and say, Lord, we're not deserving of your love. But when we know that we're loved by God, we love people so well. We have to remind ourselves continuously to, be, to know that we're loved by God. We know that we are connected. When we know who we are connected to, we can't not love greatly. I love what Jensen Franklin says. He says, love like you've never been hurt. He actually wrote a book on it. Love like you've never been hurt. Love is forgiving 70 times 70. Love is at all costs. Love takes 20 steps farther than what the world could even think is true love. It's going the distance. I grew up with amazing parents. They continuously loved me growing up, and they still continuously love me to this day. They're continuously coming after me with great love. And when we know that we're loved by God, we continue to, to chase other people with the love of God and say, God loves you. He loves you despite your shortcomings. He loves you despite what you're going through in this moment, despite your circumstance. He loves you even despite your addiction. Does God want you to live in that? No, but his mercies are new every single morning, and his love is so great to completely wipe that stuff out of your life. His love actually changes us. His love reaches to the furthest, most unlovable person. We know the story of the Good Samaritan of loving those in need. We have the ability, church, tonight to start a wildfire of love. When the world shouts hate, let the people of God shout love. The world needs a, a wildfire of crazy love. <laughs> Absolutely crazy. Here we go. No agenda. No strings attached love. The only thing that's attached is Jesus. But we don't love people to get something back. We don't go the extra mile to do something for somebody just to see what we can get in return. We love at all costs because Jesus paid the price for that. And if we love at all costs, we don't know what God has for us on the other end of that extended hand of love. Love reaches, love gives, love continues to pour out, love comes out of our heart, through our mouth. Love absolutely has to saturate us at every moment of every day if we're going to be able to function in this day. We cannot function without love. We absolutely cannot function without love. Do we even really know God if we don't have love? That's what his word says. Love gives. Enjoy his love for you today. Have your love filled by him so that you can give it to others who don't have it. John 14, 15 says, if you love me, obey my commandments. First John 4, 8 says, anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love. That's our DNA right there. 1 John 4.19 says, we love because he first loved us. These are so simple to remember. Because there's no second option because we were option A when he loved us. And now we give that love to others. There's no option B because we were his option A. As I was praying this week, the Holy Spirit spoke these words to me. He said, fight to love because love fought for you. Fight to love because love fought for you. I could, I could just think of, of times where I needed a rescue and he was my rescuer. 
a time where I needed out and safety, he was my help in time of need. He will pursue you with his love. The love of God is so gentle and so kind. And I believe that even tonight, God is saying, just receive the love. Just receive the love. If you're married, just receive the love from your spouse. If you're desiring to be married, seek the love of our king. Continue to be loved by God because he loves you. Daniel, I'm going to call you up because I'm going to close out in just a minute. But I want us to declare something tonight. And I want us to say these words. Say, I will fight to love no matter what. I will go beyond my hurts because he heals. It's who he is. He's just that good. And so tonight, I want to sing a song over us before we go. And I just want to declare God's goodness and his mercy over us. Because I believe that even now, he's going to minister to our hearts. And I want us to really pray and say, Lord, even I'm not... As we always say, we will never step foot up here if we have not felt the conviction in our own heart for the message that God has given us. So even now we examine our own self. I examine my own self to say, Lord, what are areas in my life I can love better? What are areas in my life I can completely cut off the jealousy and champion those around me and love better and do the things you've called me to do without any hesitation to follow the cross of love. So even now, church, I just pray that we would begin to just even look internally. Say, Lord, what is it? What is it that you're speaking to me? What is a direction that maybe you want to lead me in for me to call me into a deeper relationship of love, a deeper motive of love. So right now, I just want to take 15, 20 seconds, and I want the Lord to just speak to us and just let him minister to you right now. Let him minister to you right now. Rejoices when the truth wins out, never losing heart in any drought. Oh, oh, oh. love was in the blood, cause love was in the His love was in the blood of my Savior, Savior of my Savior, Savior. For it is perfect, it expels out all fear. Stand on higher ground With its confidence There's no turning back It endures through every storm And will surely last forever Stand to our feet For it is perfect It expels out all fear 
victory to stand on higher ground with its confidence there's no turning back it endures through every storm will surely last forever it endures through every storm you love and will surely last forever it endures through every storm will surely last forever and love was in the blood yes it was cause love was in the blood love was in the blood of my Savior Savior of my Savior Savior see the cross none apart from his love it rejoices when the truth runs out never losing heart in any drought Lord that's our prayer tonight God that even in the drought we would not lose heart because your love has made a way. Even in the hard times, Lord, your love has made a way. How good it is to be loved by a God in heaven who sent his son to this earth to die for us. What a joy it is to be loved by you, God. So Lord, I pray even now you would just Give us a fresh revelation of that love tonight. You can't love us any more, any less. Your love remains the same. No matter if we messed up today, your love remains the same. No matter we do something great this week for you, your love remains the same constant, it's consistent, it's everlasting. You're so good to us, God. What a joy it is to be loved by the King. So we thank you, we love you. It's in your name we pray to you. Thank you for joining our Capital City Church family this week. My name is Kyle, this is my wife, Victoria. We hope that you are encouraged by the message from our pastor. Every week, there are opportunities to get involved with our community. To find out about our events that are happening and to partner with us through giving, please click the link below. And if today's message blessed you, share it with a friend. We'll see you next week.